Last season on Jomez House. Gentlemen, welcome to Jomez House. The weight of being a professional starts to set worst. in. Yeah, you lost to me by five strokes, but I lost five discs in one hole. I haven't shot a thousand rated round in three freaking months. It's not even fair to the other competitors, honestly. Like circle one and circle two, 100%, I was unbelievable. Right. Just a machine out there. An uninvited house guest joins the fray. Bring you the 2024. Oh, hey, see? I'm sorry, I'm late, sorry. You're late. What do you? Who are you? Jerem, it's it's me. It's the, it's the cannon. Loose cannon, dude. AJ Risley? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of. You I, look I, I different. Yeah. You're like five years late, bro. Where do you where did you come from? I don't. I don't think I know you. As the drama ramps up, so do the challenges. Start a video without saying hello and welcome. Commentate an entire video completely submerged in water. An electric fence. How many watts of it can you handle? Commit tax fraud, just for fun. Successfully steal a cow, befriend it, and teach it a language. Rob a bank with your best friends, and spend the rest of your life running. Drink an entire gallon of spoiled rotten milk. <clears throat> and then start running around. See how your tummy feels now. Our competitors will have to learn to not only work together, but live together. You wanna to get some food? Mexican. Again? Love All Mexican. Right. Oh, that's fine. Speaking of food, has anyone fed Kenny and Paul yet? Nope. I'm on it. And Haley King makes another circle <coughs> two putt. It's okay, we'll just reset. Haley King with her sec. <coughs> <coughs> Good. After you. Approaching the final green, this putt means everything. <coughs> A tough start for him. We'll see if he can bring it back after these messages. Brad, what are we looking at here? What do you got? Back nine left. We got about 45 seconds to get a snack in. All right, we got all kinds of snacks. We got trail mix. I know you love mac and cheese, peanut butter, a little nanner. Got a kind bar if you need it. And I've got an onion. Good for the heart. Each guest finds their own ways to deal with the trauma. And my agent promised me there'd be no surprises this season with Jomez, but what happens right before we start the first episode? Surprise, surprise, Loose Cannon Risley shows up, tries to steal the scene once again. Kenny, what do you do as an older guy trying to keep up with the young guns out there? They're just so dang good. How do you do it? Friendships start okay. to unravel. I mean, when was the last time Erica was on coverage even? Is she even relevant anymore? And honestly, this is a camera job. I mean, has she ever heard of shampoo? I mean, she's got just more of an audio only face, if you know what I mean. That gray hair, ugh. Anyway. Um, that looks to be like the shot of the year from Missy Gannon. Incredible. Yeah, another thrasher. No one saw that coming. No one. Day one, Paul didn't start the recording on either the front nine or back nine. We've got two hours wasted and I've got to tee off in two hours. I miss you, I miss big sexy days, and I don't know what to do. Dude, I don't know that I can make it. I mean, on short, this short notice? I'll get you a flight, I don't care. I'll pay for it out of my pocket. Please, bring big sexy back. Daddy can go. Cora, no. No, oh, somebody's at the door, man. I'm no. In there. no, 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 hear me out. Nate, please. Right. Sorry, man, gotta go. No. Bye, 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 bye. No, one more. No! Tune in to see what lies ahead this season on Jomez House. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2024 touring season. It is set to begin here in Brooksville, Florida at the Olympus Course. Chess.com Invitational presented by Discraft, Big Barry, commentary bringing all the action, Jeremy Colling, Paul Uliberry. How's it going, bud? It's good. Can't wait to get into the action. Every single year, new talent comes to the tour, and we get to see the best as well possible, man. And I'm excited, but let's throw it back to Paul Macbeth, course owner and dang good disc golfer. Course owner, course designer. Uh, obviously, for those who don't know, Dil Dylan Cease of the Chicago White Sox and Paul Macbeth bought this property, formerly known as the Grand Canyon Course. And we have got two of the last 
generational goats, Ricky Waisaki and Paul McBeth here. This is gonna be an exciting battle and oh my goodness, we have the current best player, according to rankings, number one ranked player in the world, Calvin Heimberg. My goodness, what a card we have for you guys for the start of the season. And rounding off the card, we have got Chris Clemens, new sponsor with Discraft this season. Rocking the Bad Birdie shirt. I got that shirt, homie. You're looking good today. This is gonna be an exciting round. 2024, folks, here we go. Hole one, par three, 357, up the hill, red basket. Don't even look at it. We're going past that, underneath this little pine on the right. There it is, flex sidearm is a good play if you got the distance or try to sneak something right underneath that pine to get in the circle. This is going to be typical around the green danger. Yeah, it's going to be one of the elements that you're going to see a lot here at the Olympus course. First on the tee, Ricky Waisaki. Forehand is such a great weapon here on this hole. Low ceiling, one of the features of this course is a lot of the Spanish moss, these big live oaks. And Ricky slipping off the tee, but the line looks wonderful. If it's not too far in the air, what the? that is so much power, it is hard to even imagine. Huh. Next on the tee pass, With a slip. Calvin Go, That's a rocket ship. <laughs> that was That's blasted crazy. off. Yeah. Do you remember what the wind was doing here? Was it, or it was a right to left cross, I believe, which it, made it tough for the backhand to keep turning to the right. And Calvin's right gone there. deep and over the hill. Now, one of the things that I was currently experiencing and I was seeing out there for all the cards was swirly wind conditions all day. So what was happening for us early in the day is probably not the same as what these guys are dealing with right here. Now this is more of the traditional forehand line, the low skip that kind of slows the speed down and Paul is just outside bullseye for a beautiful start. Yeah, I do I, I do think that this is a, a right to left cross one because see how straight that mm -hmm. keeps going and it doesn't really lift off to the hill. That is such a good forehand there for Next Macbeth. The pad, Chris Clemens. Also makes sense with how far Ricky went straight. Mm-hmm. That wind kind of pushing it. Kind of a dream lefty hole right here. Yeah. Chris has got this nice and wide. Does it have enough skip? Yeah, that's going to get him inside the circle. Pin high. Let's call it 27 feet. Let's see what Ricky and Calvin are dealing with. There are some obstacles down here. None that bother Ricky, though. Calvin might be in a trickier spot. Yeah, and he's having to go down to a knee and go with a forehand. Of course, is this open all year round now? I think they're selling passes year round. Yeah. But it is, that's a newer thing. And so you, you get a lot of the things. Well, let's hold on for one second for Chris's putt. And just low, but fortunately does not roll. But the rough here has that feeling of a course that doesn't get played that often. It's very, very rough as soon as you get off the fairway, especially with the Spanish moss hanging down. Yeah, it's super thick, and I don't see the rough really getting beat in because it's most of it's on, like, big-time cliffs. There's not going to be a lot of yeah, travel. Sure. Macbeth with a great start. Not going to be a lot of travel just hanging around cliffs, walking up and down. <laughs> no, <you know? laughs> no, no. One of the six holes on the course, the average below par. Really? The conditions on the course for the day are super duper windy. So we're gonna give a little check in here with Chris Dickerson on hole one. And this is the way you have to play it if and you want the bird really wow. for, for righty back end. You gotta, you gotta slide right underneath that pine. I mean, that is so good. What a way to start the season for Chris. Just bullseye. And Anthony Brell with a step putt, count it. Scary little putt to start the tournament. You're going to see a lot of people lay that one up. No question. No laying up there from Paul as he has started his round and his season at one under par.
Hey everyone, I want to let you know today's video is brought to you by Vessi. As disc golfers, we know how hard it is to find versatile shoes that you can wear on the course or around town. And that's where our friends at Vessi have you covered. Vessi started as a way to get people out in the world on rainy days. That's why Vessi makes 100% waterproof shoes so you can feel confident and ready to explore the outdoors no matter the conditions. Vessi has models that are perfect for any disc golf course. Navigate any terrain in style and comfort so you can tackle any course anytime. Vessi's are 100% waterproof, not water resistant, so you can keep water out and your feet dry with their Dymatex technology. Imagine finally being able to retrieve your disc from the water just by stepping in and grabbing it by hand. Vessi is about to change your game. Vessi is here to help you navigate city streets or your local course with confidence and comfort. These shoes redefine what waterproof looks and feels like so you can focus on playing your best. So kickstart your new year with Vessi. Discover style and versatility at Vessi.com slash JomezPro and use code JomezPro for 15% off your first order. That's Vessi.com slash JomezPro and use code JomezPro for 15% off. Thanks again to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Taking a look down the fairway of hole two, down the tight corridor. You've got to keep this thing down the middle with high speed driver. You want to work your disc out to the left side on this par four, 730 feet. And you really want to try to cut that distance down by about 400 feet off the tee, maybe even more to try to set up a backhand turnover or a high stall forehand that has to somehow make its way up, not one, but two shelves. And it's pretty well protected high and low. So it's a very difficult green to access. Ooh, and this is early left. As long as it doesn't get pulled into the left, he should be fine. And that is a decent reaction for Macbeth. This is a really good indication of what this course is like. Mm -hmm. Great tee shot right down the middle for Ricky, but he's still going to have a tough up shot from there. This is yeah. no gimme. A lot of these that greens are so well good. guarded with, uh, what are those guys right there? The the sawgrass? Sawgrass, that's what I it call is. it pompous grass. Pompous grass. But yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is not a comfortable thing to try to throw out of, and certainly uh, it's going to affect most players throughout some course, uh, some part of the round. It'll slice you up. Calvin with a decent shot. Chris, tough lefty turnover, but he has done very well just to get it through the gap and into the middle of the fairway. It will be a bomb from there to try to get the birdie. But there is no shame in taking par here on the second. Which is all Paul is left with is get it up to the left side. Yes. Give yourself a shot into the green. I was really impressed with Ricky's drive because he just had such a slow move on it and it still made it all the way past the sawgrass. He's probably left less than 300 to the pin, maybe 250. Is this going deep? Or short. That's short. Okay. Yeah, you see how it's so far up there. Even if you get the height, you're going to probably get smacked down by those limbs up top. And that is just too inside. It appears, unless he gets lucky. No. And that could prove to be a difficult short pitch for Calvin. And Ricky's so far up. He's going to try to go spike Heiser? Okay, I haven't seen this play, but this thing is moving way left and yeah. it's actually decent. Okay. I don't think I like that play though. It looked like if it didn't hit that tree, he's probably trying to play Plinko, but if he misses that, it could go anywhere. I probably just didn't like the, the route that Paul's going with right here in practice. I mean, it is a very narrow corridor to hit and it's blind. Even with the best drives, you're not gonna be able to see around the corner. Oh, this isn't too bad for Calvin. Split these two trees right there. Yep, bingo. Short par putt coming for Calvin. Get it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. What an effort. A little chain out. Great touch going up the hill with the wind. This place does give you a lot of options as far as being able to run a couple of these positions with hills right behind them. That's not necessarily one of those spots, though. I'm surprised that he got so aggressive with that. There is out of bounds another 15 to 20 feet beyond that. Yeah, there is. 
And Macbeth does scramble for the par. Looks like it will be pars for the card as long as Calvin and Ricky are able to clean up. Go up, see? And now, well, he didn't get behind that stuff, fortunately, but that is a head scratcher. Nothing more difficult in our sport than having a an eight footer up the hill. Just let me finish. <laughs> I just the the steep, the steep slopes and and serious wind. If you got to get the nose yes. up or the nose down, hundred percent. It's you just never quite know sure. where to release the disc. Anything in wind having to go up the hill is not a formality. And we're checking on Except Anthony Brella, who's Anthony. got the stepper down two for two to start. Looking good with the putt for Barella. Good little par save there from Only Beth. eight birdies for the field on hole number two, just to kind of give you an idea how difficult it is to get there in two. Two of those players also got hole one, Nicolas Antela and Anthony Barella. On to the much simpler, but still not necessarily easy, par four. Hole three is 531 feet. It is the third easiest hole in the course. Mm. You want to throw a backhand with either maybe a stable mid-range or maybe a fairway driver to try to land in that road somewhere. Even the best drives are going to have a blind uphill approach to try to go underneath this beautiful live oak. And I mean, what else can you say about it? It's just one of the things that makes this place so special. It's just a very beautifully aesthetic property. Oh, Paul. That's going to be short and left. And he what really got away yeah. with about yeah. five different things there. And he's actually in a spot where I think he might be able to manage a birdie look. Yeah, it just depends on his ceiling, really. I think if he has a option for the sidearm turnover, he's, he can get it up there. But with the wind wow. swirling. Oh, the, my goodness. Oh, he's... The wind swirling the way that it is, it's really pushing it out towards that mm -hmm. road on the right, which um, on your second shot, you have to deal with to get to there in a second, though. Here's a little rocket ship oh, race. Oh, wow. I, Chris is inside on the left side. But the, the reaction from the disc and the wind was just outrageous. This has just got to miss this middle guy. Or, oh, no, no. It misses the middle guy, but hits a rock or something. That's dead. What an awful break. Yeah, he's just got to pitch it sideways. Really? Awful break. Now, where Ricky is, he's short, but this is totally doable because he can get a little more power and not have to go so high. And he goes with a... Decently high speed, plays the skip, and is in the circle. That is a great effort from back there. Is that in the circle? There's, yeah, it's, it's the, the circles for the MPO and FPO basket are crossing up there. But I think he is inside the circle. Okay. Calvin is not. He is in circle three. And he will have more than likely a bogey in the scorecard when he finishes hole three. Another one, actually. You see how pinched off he is there yeah kind of going straight up the hill and a little world champ love there to work its way back down the hill make the up and down for par a little easier yes really there's not a hole out here where you get a par and you feel like it's just the worst par of all time no there's, like there's three the, holes i mean yeah i think every single birdie on the course feels really good Oh, yeah. There's, there's nothing given to you out here at this property. And I think it's because that man right there is behind this course. He wanted to design a championship level course, and he took the original Grand Canyon course and he put his stamp on it. That being said, it's the, the flow of the course is the same as it's always been. Ricky just oh, over the rim and in for the birdie. Dangerous putt right there. You can see. Uh... Looks like wing over there on the on the right. Big drop off. I only see half of them. That's how I know. 
I think Paul said that he's only changed or added like three or four holes. It's just everything's just been kind of lengthened out a bit. Maybe the tee, maybe the basket, maybe both. I did not think that had enough to get over the rim, but Ricky got the right power, the right height, and now he joins Macbeth at one under. They're chasing Anthony Brella, who has not missed one yet. What is the simplest way to improve your disc golf game? The answer, learn from the very best. Paul Uliberry, Simon Lazat, Ezra Aderhold, and Holland Hanley. They're not just players. They are your elite coaches guiding you every step of the way. The Power Disc Golf Academy is the premier online disc golf academy with over 150 on-demand lessons that are specifically designed to improve your skills right now. So what are you waiting for? Join today at PowerDGA.com. Hole four, par four, 664 feet. A lot to unpack here. <laughs> Heiser off the tee, low ceiling. I have seen people go over the top as well. This is not a fairway. It is kind of. Let me explain why. Off the tee, you want to land short, and you'll have two gaps, one up the hill and possibly that right gap as well. You'll be able to choose. I mean, this is almost a par five. I guess I, that's the best way I can explain it. It's, it's, it plays it's a, like a par it's five. It plays like a par five. It really does. Ricky's Let's, tee shot is just as good as you could ever want because it stays right. Yes. Now, a lot of those shots that start to hyzer towards mm -hmm. the end of the flight, they've got a huge oak in the middle of the fairway they have to contend with. Ricky staying right is going to give him access to that right side, and he's going to have a chance. Which is so skinny. And even if he hits the right side, there's no possible chance unless he gets a wild skip to get up the hill. Mm -hmm. If he throws a perfect shot, he's going to have 50 feet up the hill. That's the way this hole plays. I think in order to get this, like, uh, make it the most gettable is to get left and then power something up the left side because it can actually get up top yeah i mean that's just so hard to describe for because our, our drone's not going that way and i doubt any of these guys are going to be going up the hill we'll see here with calvin's because he is going I, down the left side i don't think there's going to be a group that doesn't go left side at least one person. yeah somebody should yeah a good look at what Macbeth has from back here as we're finally facing the fairway peered 150 short maybe more uh, yeah somewhere in that range though you know as as a player oh no and a commentator i'm always trying to break down a holes idea don't it did bad break there for the chris i'm, I'm but i'm always trying to figure out how would i describe how you play this hole and i i haven't been able to come up with anything yet for me personally like, and Calvin trying to go down the skinny line kicks over the barbed wire fence and he is OB see from where Ricky is he's got this hyzer but he could throw that power sidearm up top I think oh. that's the play personally oh, oh he, he gets through where is and, he how far is that ah uh, is he in the circle wow he's at the bottom of the circle but it's like straight up the hill from there yeah. but that is 45 a, feet that's incredible. Chris with a great scramble. I mean, you can't place his drive any better. Yeah. You can't push that second shot any farther right because he got through all that stuff, and he's still rewarded with a 45-footer. There was one person in the entire field all day that was inside circle one in regulation. Wow. One person, and his name is Cole Rodolin. And the reason I say going left is the best place because I saw somebody go deep. Oh, wow. On the left side. So Ricky has this incredibly tough putt up the hill, and he jams what? it. And there were only two players in the field to birdie it, and Ricky was the other. What a putt. That is this. an insane putt. Best possible drive, best possible approach, essentially. And then a 10 out of 10 putt. And that's what you have to do to birdie on the pro tour these days. What's incredible about Ricky is the ability to switch between his pitch putt and then that spinner. 
right there. And he, he jammed that one. This is a big putt for bogey for Calvin, and he drills it. Beauty. And that will be a turkey in the wrong way. That's a burnt turkey is what that is. A little aggressive with that tap in, sir. Ricky at two under par. I'm, I, I wasn't sure if we would see a birdie on this hole. But Ricky just shows, I mean, from that line, how aggressive he muscled up on that second shot. Impressive. I mean, you saw Chris out of bounds. You mm -hmm. saw uh, Calvin mm -hmm. out of bounds. Mm -hmm. That's how easy that is just to pull it to the right side. We've got a couple of these little gully valley shots here. Hole five is the first one. Par three, blind, 408 feet. Never mind the red basket here. We are going around the corner. And this area right here, this little dip, is where the best tee shots really end up. I haven't seen anyone park this one yet. If there's going to be a card to do it, this would be the card to see. But we'll see if anyone can get inside actual C1. Hurry. Is that pushing that backside? No, this is really good. And in the dip. He just made that putt, though. That's the thing about this course. Totally. You're going to have to make that putt a bunch of times if you want to get a bunch of birdies. Or some parts, too, as we saw Calvin have to make it on the last hole for a bogey. So this is the way to get there. The low skipper that has a chance to get on top of that next plateau. Not quite, but... That's a great drive for Paul. Get to see Chris's power forehand for the first time this round. And comes up a bit short, a little bit high out of the release. A little wind shear lift as well, didn't help. A lot of danger here as well. You go left side or right side and you end up at the bottom of that ravine. It almost takes paring the hole out of question. And Calvin overpowers the drive. The inside line was nice, but that disc needed to be a little bit more overstable once it made the corner. But they're all safe off the tee, which is the first objective, of course. And good little scramble from the saw grass for Chris. It was weird. I thought he hit something because of the tie-dye, mm -hmm. and it looked like it made its disc wobble. All weird, but that wasn't true. It did a little, look a little funky. Can Ricky make two in a row? Jeez, oh my, my God. God. See, so he switches from the spin putt on the last hole up the hill to the pitch putt on that one up the hill. Yeah. I mean, He's when... He's different. When do you He's decide, like, oh, yeah, now it's time to just make it this way? One person in the entire field was in C1 regulation on hole four. This hole, three people out of 90, 93 players. I, I'm not actually sure. Um, oh. Well, why are you telling us that, dude? Come well, on. We, we, you <laughs> know, on, <laughs> we are working with a, a new stats thing, to be completely honest with our fans here. We're working with new stats here, and uh, and it is a little rudimentary, and it will improve over time. So we will be able to give you more in-depth stats as the season progresses. But one stat that I can tell you clear as day is Ricky Wysocki has birdied the last three holes, and now he is tied with Anthony Barella at three under through five holes, which is just a blistering start. Yeah, remarkable, really. This one, hole six, par four, 790 straight down a cliff this is all about speed control and choosing the right disc you need to go from right to left if you go too straight there is an out of bounds line but it's a touchy feathery little shot if you go too far you can catch the shrubs about 300 feet off the tee and if you go too early you'll get caught up uh, on this left side this is a good look from ricky wysocki if he can get the height right you'll know right away that looks pretty good but it could be pushing the yeah. back side well wow that must no. be no. Oh, it's a putter. There you go. Okay, that's not a driver. Oh, yeah. I was like wondering how on earth I didn't push Same. it because he actually had a pretty decent move on it. Yeah, it looked like one of those uh, Halo 
which are usually the fast ones. This one I that's like the doing. angle. Yeah, mm -hmm. pushing hyzer the whole way. Yeah, wraps around the corner. The one thing you're trying to do at all costs is avoid that sawgrass on the right side. I mean, that's just you're dead to rights in there. Yeah, I threw that disc of his in practice. I found it on this hole. He told me to throw it back to him. I threw it in a pond. <laughs> 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 I didn't know that was going that way. Yeah. Threw it straight in the middle of the pond. Nice anecdote. So, Thank you, Paul. Yep. I don't know how he has that. <laughs> he did everything he could to lose it for him, and somehow he still has it. That's a good shot there from Chris. Is this one have the right? Yeah. yeah. They're making this hole look easy. It is not. It's, it's not, it's it's not intuitive. Yeah. It, it, you stand on this tee box, and you're thinking, oh, power shot, power hyzer, and it's, it is all touch. Well, the second shot, I waited to explain it because it, it's tough to explain. It just takes so much power to get all the way up there. Mm. It's only 350, 370 feet from where they are. But with the way the wind is swirling, it's playing 420, 450, and it's a right to left crosswind. So if you turn it over, watch Calvin here. If this gets turned over at all, it's, it's going to keep, keep turning. Keep turning. Well... Not if it fights back like that, and that's a dime. Well, you know what he did is he hugged that right side. Most people are going way left mm -hmm. and trying to drift it in. That more, was of more of a straight, straight line. Yeah. yeah, just really well executed there from Calvin, and he's going to get on the board with his first birdie. Because it looks like it's way around the corner, but it's really not. It's just over those um, ferns. I just... How about that? What did you call him? Sawgrass. No, you said something else. Pompous grass. Yeah. I never called them ferns. That's that I know. I don't know. What is a fern? <laughs> it's a plant. It's a it's it's like a little Is it kinda like those things? It's like sh yeah. Well well I'll show you a picture at halftime. Okay. From deep ooh. A little, a little run at it. This is one of those areas where you're talking about where there's like that steep embankment behind the pin yes. gives you the green light go from all ranges to really just have at it. Chris trying to give it a cute little basketball shot from half court. Go ahead and call that one the air ball. Can Ricky make it four outside C1s in a row? No. The height was seemingly pretty good, just a little bit too much turn. Awkward little putt here. Should be fine though. Oh, he moved that forward. We're gonna have to move that back. We want to play by the rules. <laughs> Looks like he did. What, moved it too far back. <laughs> what is going on here? Just kidding. <laughs> Trying to make an eight-footer interesting. You're good at that. So is Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. Calvin's first birdie of the tour season is here on hole six. It's a sick one. It's a really nice approach. Backhand into that green is so tough. These guys are going to make their way up a hill. That is one of the things you do quite a bit here at Grand Canyon. You, you kind of play down a dip, and then you, you, you walk up to the next tee, and you kind of play down. You do that a bunch, actually. Want to play chess but don't know how to get started? Try chess.com. Play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots. Sign up and play for free at chess.com today. Hole seven, one of the first holes on the course where you can see the pin. Hole two is the other one. At this point, it's just a lot of blind tee shots. But this one's straightforward in front of you. 350 feet, a pretty dramatic left to right slope. Yeah, gettable hole right here. Keep it on hyzer, miss that right tree. There's a right tree guarding like the very end of the flight. And, and that's nearly the shape that Calvin was looking for. I think he wanted to get that either a little flatter or try to force a slight Anheuser angle out of the hand, but came out with a little bit too much hyzer. And I think we're kind of underselling how windy it is out here so far. Like, it's hard to pick a right disc on a low shot like this when you have the wind coming up and doing all kinds of I think it's the hardest thing you can do in the sport. I, exactly, yeah. Technical windy golf, especially on hillsides, is, I mean, those three things together are just so demanding. And on, on top of that, none of our practice rounds 
even remotely close resembled this type of wind. So on top of the fact that we've never played this course on tour before, not that we haven't been here, but we've never played it as a tour event. Um, we're trying to learn how these discs are moving on these fairways in completely different conditions as Christo is a great shot on the green. This can get away. This is something, Paul's gonna make a decision here if he's laying up or if he's going for it. It looks like he's giving it a good bid, but watch out here. That's what I was concerned about. It is a very fast slope behind the pin. Very dangerous. And you see Ricky doesn't want to have anything to do with that. Weird. And we'll see if Paul pays the price for, yeah, oh well, my goodness. If he makes this, this is a season highlight right from the beginning. And there Almost it off the tree. Um, I'm just surprised Paul or Ricky laid that up. He's been running everything. That's a great birdie there from, from Chris. Not surprised to see Chris get the birdie here. This is a hole that shapes his forehand nicely. But I am surprised to not see birdies from Ricky Calvin Same. or or Paul. I'm telling you, I think it's that the wind is. Is oh, it's messing with just, everyone. Yeah. No question. Because if you get it on too much turnover, as we watch uh, Isaac's... Oh, world champion Isaac Robinson. Look I mean, at this play. That's a... No, that is... That's that an is, accident. That is an accident. And no way you just got away with that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you see what he did there? Put it on Anheuser. That's yes. what you had to do on that one. Right. But then you tend to pull it. That's why nobody wants to put it on Anheuser. Right. And even with Anthony Brella's three for three start, you can see how difficult that middle section on the front nine is. He is still at three under as is Ricky. As we go to a very fun hole, hole eight, 487 feet down and then slightly back up the hill. You cannot see the basket from the tee, but you can see the gap pretty well. And you're just trying to throw a turnover with a distance driver. And once again, you got the backstop behind the pin. So don't worry about distance, just crash it through that gap. Kind of a difficult line for a righty backhand thrower to get the shape right. Kind of a good, a good hole though for a lefty hyzer. Yeah, I mean, to, to park it though, it seems like it, it'd be difficult. Yeah, maybe. I'm just thinking the shape fits the, the backhand turnover better. Yeah, I, I think you're right. To park it, you can definitely do something like this. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, Calvin's oh. just trying to punch through the, through the gap, and he gets a little bit lucky here with this big tree. But give credit to where credit's due. I mean, he put the disc on a great line yeah. and gets a fantastic result. Because I've been seeing a lot of people just throw the sidearm hyzer to like 40. Let's see if Ricky can do it. I hadn't even considered it, and I think I have a new play going into round two. Yeah, I, I, I saw a few people on my card actually. I mean, get up there. <laughs> I, I can't even describe on camera right now how much better that is than what I was faced with after my tee shot. So we'll just leave it at that. Use your imagination. Well, Paul's going to have to use his because his is fighting out to the left. There is out of bounds over there. He's yeah, I'm aware. To avoid that. <laughs> Me too. I got a red flag and I was actually I, safe on the other side. I was. I, so there you go, folks. That's two for two here in the commentary booth. You too? Way over there, dude. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Way awesome. over there. It's a whole new world on that yeah. side of the OB. Still bogeyed it for sure. Oh, Paul gets that's pretty good from in there. I'm gonna be honest with you. It Left is side, thick. it's the it's the Jurassic period in there. You do not want to go back to the dinosaurs. Um, not what we're used to seeing there from. And a bogey. Ricky and Paul. That will put it's, Paul to one over. It's all because of the wind. I mean, it is just. Oh no! I mean, it's just swirling up there. It's it's tough. Look at that. A par, two bogeys, and a bullseye for Calvin. And 
That's just like 2023 on repeat right there. Not a good start for Calvin, yet somehow he's there. His score is fine. One over par right now is where probably more than half of the course is at this point. And from a very similar place to where Ricky just was, Anthony Brella, folks, C2, he ain't messing around. It's one of the best putts I've ever seen right there as far as, like, the flight. That was really good. And Gannon Burr. Hmm. Also That's playing with new discs this season. It's one of the fun things to always keep an eye on as the season begins. All the superstar players with their new brands. Here's Chris. And okay, so it's allowing some people to get through there. Some great putts. Gannon looked like he was obstructed over there on the left, too, and makes it. All right, through eight holes, we got one more on this back nine. And it's a doozy. It's just a... This is the hole that if you've been watching players on tour, post Instagram posts, that it's been typically on this hole. And they make it look a lot shorter on these videos than when you stand on that tee pad and you look at the length that you have to clear and then get up this dramatic hill, 465 feet from tee to the green, to the basket specifically. And if you don't get all the way to the top of that hill, you have to take relief as if it was played like out of bounds. You'd go where you crossed into the hazard area without a stroke. I think we know where this is going. And Calvin has played this line just perfect. And sits down nicely on the ground as well. Inside the circle, that looked entirely too easy. Oh. He needs help. That's exactly what I did. If you and I, th they must be dealing with a similar similar wind and that headwind, which is just crazy that Calvin blasted through it so fast. Oh, this is close. Nope. Top of the hill, the forehand is hard to imagine, but I don't think Chris is going for it without having some success in practice. I couldn't tell if he hit the tree or just the embankment. And this is hyzering left. And that's tough over there. Yes, it will be very difficult. And Paul's going to try to avoid having a burnt turkey himself. That is good, smooth touch there from Ricky. Wow, what a good shot from down there. Scary from down there. Very well controlled. And yeah, you can see what the six-time world champ is faced with. It is not good. And wow, what a shot. Hmm. Didn't look like he threw it very hard. And Chris will spike that in the bullseye. Calvin for birdie to get back to even and right out of his hand. Then you want to look at it. It will be pars for the group. Okay, well, not a lot going on on that front nine. We got three under par for Ricky and then a bunch of one overs from the rest of the group. That's par for the course though, I feel like. One over? Front nine yeah. is treacherous. The, the back nine has some openings. There are some opportunities to score. There's a par five that can be eagled. Um, but yeah, the, the front nine is, it's impressive to see a lot of scores in this two to three range, especially with the wind. You know how it goes though. First round of the season, Everyone, there's a little nerves going on. People are trying to settle in, get comfortable, try to load the course. But, you know, when the wind's fighting back so much, it's hard to get things going. Maybe these guys will get settled in the back nine. Maybe we see some good scores. But either way, we do have nine more holes here. 
from the 2024 Chess.com Invitational presented by Discraft coming right up. Yeah.